Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Astrology Victoria. Today, with your host, Tatiana, and I will be discussing the astrology of this week, uh, Monday the 15th, all the way through Sunday the 21st. So, let's get into it. Um, dun, dun, dun. Let's see if we can put my face somewhere that's not impacting the chart. All right, so we kick off this week a little bit with some of the intensity from last week and the full moon, uh, as there is still some tightness in the sky in the fixed cross, which is Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus. We have this tight aspects between Saturn and then Uranus. And then Saturn opposition, the sun, which is going to be what this week will still be feeling a little bit of this. Luckily, Mars is already separating enough from Uranus. And oh my God, what a ride. I think with this Mars Uranus, um, you know, I don't, I'd like to hear your stories or comments if you had like maybe accidents, things breaking, or you know, what happens with Mars Uranus is this restlessness and the energy just needs to go somewhere and it's like, ah, pff, it wants to liberate. We talked about this last week. Um, and interestingly enough, I was at a wedding the other day and the there was a a, a little girl who had to do um, some kind of something. And, and well, she basically broke her arm the day before. And again, this is energy of broken things, broken bones here at the where I live. No, there was a broken glass the other day and um, all these kinds of things that can be part of of this Uranus Mars. So whatever happened last week, the restlessness, the upheavals around the world, I do not necessarily watch the news. So I am not very currently into all that's one ha what's happening. I do hear of things, you know, revolutions and, you know, politics. I'm not too much into that necessarily. My interest is really how we can transform our own uh, reactions to whatever happens out in the world, how we can shape the world with how we change ourselves. And you know, yesterday I was listening to that song by Michael Jackson, The Man in the Mirror. So if you don't remember that song, it goes, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make the change. So this is a great reminder that we are the ones that co-create this existence and the stars or whatever alignments are happening in, 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 in the stars just create the environments for these pushes. So what is this um, Grand Cross telling us? It's to this, this tension between what what it's outside ourselves that we need to restructure is just moving ourselves into something we really align with. The sun in Leo represents our deepest desire to self-express, to connect to our hearts. Leo rules the heart. What's in my heart? What do I love? What do I want? When there's an opposition to Saturn, what happens is outside there could seem blockages, difficulties, we can't self-express. It seems that like we cannot step up to what we want because something out there is, is setting the limitation within we, we, what we need to be doing or, or being. So this can seem like that difficulty. The, <clears throat> the invitation you show with Saturn is to take responsibility for that. So if I know myself that I can take responsibility for what I want and I want to create in the world and do and take the action necessary. And when we talk action, we're always talking Mars. And Mars has been really slowed down, not only through Taurus, where, where it's really more about self, it's about the body, about the senses, about reality, about our resources, you know, is what are we doing to, to get our resources and what we need? And with Saturn there, it seems like things are slowing it down. Like, okay, not rush. So this is a period where we might want to do things and get things done and accomplished. And then it seems like slow, like, oh, it's not moving. 
the reality is that these aspects just put us in this tension so that we can resolve it with a little bit more of determination, I, I think, and and consciousness and say, okay, if something's not working, if something's, maybe I'm just doing things too quickly and too rushly and too abruptly. So maybe slowing down is a good thing. The awesome news is with Mercury in Virgo, we have the ability to, to be very practical and pragmatic about how to go about things. So there is a plan, there's what's more efficient, it's grounded. I have Mercury in Virgo and I'm having a Mercury return just now, <laughs> exactly just now. So it's about reminding ourselves of our capacity to see things logically and think about them without attaching too much emotion and, and being very practical and organized. So this is a gift of, from Mercury. And as much as we have this Mercury um, being very pragmatic, let's not forget that this Mercury will be entering an opposition to Neptune. This It's already in, in effect, but it will perfect throughout the week. And this is where we can be caught in maybe delusions or the too good to be true kind of thing or forget to fact check or we get excited about something that's not really very tangible and then we forget to fact check and to make sure that what we're dreaming is actually possible and doable. Or the opposite can be true. We're so caught up in the details of things that we forget to connect to the greater good or, or the greater, uh, greater good, the greater field of information, the ocean of consciousness to tap into that. So at best, what we can do is, is allow ourselves to connect and get into this midpoint. How could we connect to the information out there and be very, screen the information, make sure that whatever's coming into your field is not just a fantasy, but it's doable and it's pragmatic and it can be actualized in reality. So that's kind of that tension between Mercury and uh, Neptune. And the other beautiful thing we're having here, and this is the cool one, is Mercury. Mercury is very active right now. It's, it's going to be trining Uranus. So this is the day, and today, Monday, where you, today, tomorrow, and maybe like for a couple days, you just get those genius ideas. It's, it's the aha. It's suddenly there is a revelation. Suddenly where you have a block or something, you don't know how to solve a problem, poof, the idea comes and it could be something so innovative. It could be something so different. This is the think outside the box aspect. So this is a good time to have pen and, pen and paper. If, if you have an idea, write it down. It could be coming from anywhere in the field of consciousness. It could even be coming from our cosmic family, right? This is a good time to to tap into those energies so you can find solutions for your problems and for anything moving forward. So that is all, it, it's also what's happening. At the same time, we also have this very supportive trine of Mars to Pluto happening. And this is like the will to, to do and to affect changes that needs to happen to also, it's, it's like amounts of energy and passion, and it could be, it could be sexual passion, but it's also, it's just raw energy, but it's supportive of making those changes that need to happen. And there is the will and the drive and the energy available, and also the energy to look into the darker side of things and be okay with with the changes that need to occur in your life. What is really needing to go and are we willing to look at it and actualize it and say, okay, this is done. So it's easier when you have these trines, the changes may not, they're imminent anyways, but they're easier. It, detaching seems easier. Completely accepting the new realities is easier taking action because this is Mars into what needs to happen, change and evolve, it's easier. That doesn't mean that it's not 
maybe painful or nostalgic to look back into things that it's no longer us. It's, it's no longer supporting evolution. So this aspect supports that transformation. So this is a good time to look into these things. Um, so this week we'll be having that. And this aspect will be lasting a little bit. So, so it's just something that's, that's going to be in these few, few next weeks. What it's good also is that this week starts relaxing also a little bit. Things start relaxing a little bit because of the trines that are coming in. Uh, notably, uh, Venus here is in Leo. So Venus in Leo also represents show it off. What, what do we absolutely value? That it's like, it's, it's, it's generosity, it's, it's bling bling, it's the Broadway, you know, show off what you love, what you like, you know. But it, it can also mean um, it, it's very, it's the queen energy. It's like a queen does not, you know, it's it looks it's it's like this queen and king energy right it's like it's regal it will not take less than what it deserves so this is a good time to look into your values and also what your heart wants desires and values truly and deeply a beautiful thing that's going to happen here is that venus will be also trining jupiter and this aspect gives um uh, an enormous amount of supportive energy, good friendships, people that are aligned in the same values and that can support our journey. What else? There could be genuine concern for others, you know, because it's, there's like a true desire to be with other people, to, to make hard connections with people people, um, shared values again, you know, the, what do we value? And Jupiter makes it expensive. There could be also money coming in with Jupiter and Venus. It could be some, or we could, this is the time we could look for that thing that we really love. And then we just get that thing that we actually love and want. And there is support to get that. And it could be in any area of your life. It could be from objects to, to things like, is this the job I want? Is this the people I want to be with? Is this the place I want to buy? Like, and so on and so forth. This is supportive of that to get those things that we really, really want. So that is that. Um, let's see, like moving on a little bit throughout the week. Um, well, we're going to see in this, I, this is like Thursday, there will be also beautiful trines of the moon that is a little bit sandwiched between Uranus and, and Mars, which, which can make from like deep desires to, to, to make changes and affect things um, um, with regards to your, again, values, what, you, what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel grounded, you know, it's all the Taurus energy and also, you know, the self-love is a lot in the, the Taurus energy ruled by Venus. It's about self-love and Venus right now in Leo wants it shiny and bright and, you know, <laughs> so take this energy to really take stock of what you truly value. And it's going to be with a very supportive trine to Mercury. So this is a time to think, strategize, actualize and make things actually happen. The thing is, because a lot of planets of the outer planets, especially are retrograde, and when Uranus goes retrograde towards the end of the month, we'll have all of the outer planets in retrograde. So this is the time again to change review. Um, maybe it's the time to change the things in the ethers first to do all the mental gymnastics and all the mental activities that need to happen then to actualize all those imminent changes in your life and when the planets the outer planets go direct this is when we actually see the new reality forming right now it's these preliminary stages and this time, especially August, is such a time of imminent change. There's no going back. There is an imminent change in the way, again, we've been talking about this whole Taurus thing. 
the way we relate to the earth, to our bodies, to money, to food, to farming, to all of that stuff, you know, how do we relate to mother earth? How do we get our resources? And this is like, this is changing whether we like it or not. It will change, it will evolve, and we will evolve with it. The other thing is like, I, I think we should not panic too much because usually what happens in the field of energy when there's too much tension, we tend to go into fear what's going to happen. There's not going to be food or money or this or that. And then the panic creates more of that reality. So now the invitation is to use these supportive trines to make those changes and be active about it. Now, what is going to be a little bit difficult is still that the sun is going to be making this um, square to, to, this, to Mars as well this week. And um, with this square to Mars, we can feel, um, uh, and, it's on, and Mars is on its anuretic degree in Taurus. So it's the 29th degree. It's, it's really that last little push. Um, and the sun Mars can be a little bit competitive, can feel like, okay, now I want this and this is me. And it can be a little bit forceful or competitive or too much young assertion. A good thing would be to tone it down. The, the issue now is because Venus is in, um, it's in a fire sign, right? So it's not quite soft and gentle. It could be a little bit diva <laughs> with this energy. So there could be a lot of like young assertion about things. So something to avoid is to, yes, to be too pushy maybe. And always try to use tact, you know? And so if you know what you want, what you wanna get, how you wanna do it, make sure you're using tact and not too much force. Mars has this force, even though Mars is in Taurus, a little bit reminding us to slow down and that things have their own processes. Nature doesn't just grow overnight. There's, there's this reminder to slow down. As soon as Mars enters Gemini now, that's a whole other story. And we will be seeing this tan, 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 on Saturday at zero degrees Gemini when Mars will enter uh, a, a space where it's more comfortable, let's say. And Mars in Gemini could be, could be a lot of distractions. We want to be pulled in several directions. Maybe we have a ton of ideas because um, there's, again, this Mercury here that's trying to get things in order, put things in place. There's a lot of ideas with Uranus beaming ideas. And then we might want to be pulled in ton of different directions so ideally we don't want to we we want to explore different things that's for sure it's good to explore options but try not to get too scattered that's the only thing now it's great to study new things go and do one thing then change do another thing be very sociable you know mars in gemini it can be very very sociable parties friends it's light gemini energy is light it's a light energy, it just wants fun and play. So it's, it, it might be more like, okay, we're gonna do this and that, that. It's not very deep, let's say. So yeah, a good time to explore different options as well. Just make sure not to be too scattered. That could be also a very Geministic trait is, is being so scattered that nothing gets actually completed or accomplished. Mm, what else could be happening here? The Venus, um, the Mars entering there. Oh, the Venus. I talked about Venus trying Jupiter. Yes, I talked about everything. Now the Venus square Uranus. So, uh, but this one won't be in effect necessarily until next week. So we will be talking about the square of Uranus more next week. This week, even though the square is starting to form, this is not the time where we're going to see this the most prominent. It's probably next week. However, as this square forms, we might feel the need also to be different, a little bit eccentric, maybe, you know, too much desire to do things differently or to look differently. Or with Venus, Uranus, sometimes getting committed is a little bit hard because we just don't want to be stuck to one thing. And having Mars in Gemini and Venus is squaring 
Uranus. This could be a time where like, oh, you know, it's like, it's that no expectations time where you go like, yeah, I'm going to try this, but don't lock me in. <laughs> don't lock me in. So committing at this time, not the best time if you have to form actual agreements and commitments to things. This is not the time. It could be very harsh or hard. Or if you do need to make agreements and commitments to something, we'll make sure it's something that you really, really want and resonate with. And you're not going to feel like, oh, why did I do this? Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. Um, the other thing with this is precisely the opposite is, is can you commit to something and follow through? with it that's another option but we will talk about this venus square uh, a little bit further in detail next week yeah so this isn't the main point for this week uh and a quick reminder if you're a leo a scorpio a taurus or an aquarius these things are really uh, talking to you right now and or if you have important planets or points or your ascendant in any of these um points you might be going through this these changes really really deeply so please let me know your stories in the comments below if you'd like a reading with me there's also the information below and um i wish you a wonderful week and uh, let's see what happens with the world and remember you create the reality you want to live in this is what i want to leave you with no matter what's happening in the sky, you are still always the one in control of your reactions, your thoughts, and your actions. What do you want to create in the world? Okay. Blessings to you all, and I see you next week. Bye.